Hey everybody, welcome into Warp Factor 10, our show about all things Star Trek here on the Arena Productions. I'm your host, Expat, along with my co-host, Burley. Burley, how you doing? Doing good. How are you, Expat? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. I'm ready to talk some Picard Season 3, Episode 3, 17 seconds, Burley. We're not gonna do we're not gonna do a show in 17 seconds. We're gonna do it a little bit longer than that, but <laughs> just a little bit, like 30, 37. Uh, well, yeah, for for a, for a short video, yeah, that would be pretty good, yeah. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, so we're going to be doing, of course, uh, like we usually do, our recap and discussion of uh, Star Trek: The Card, of course, season three, episode three. But uh, before we get into it and the the juxt of the episode, just want to let all of you viewers know that this will be a spoiler filled uh, recap and discussion of The Card season three, episode three. So. If you have not gone and watched the video, uh, watch the episode on uh, Paramount Plus, please go and do that first because Burley and I, we are going to destroy this episode uh, with photon torpedo uh, spoilers, of course, as we usually do. Uh, so uh, with that said, that is your spoiler warning. So let's go ahead and jump into it, Burley. Season three, episode three, 17 seconds. Uh, I j I'll just say this, my only strong pet peeve about this episode was the de-aging uh that they used when they were back uh picard and uh, riker were in uh you know uh guinan's bar it seemed like it was maybe i don't know maybe five or ten years after nemesis yeah but i mean yeah the de-aging that, that they they didn't do a really good job there i think uh, <laughs> I mean, it was a cool conversation, and obviously that's where 17 seconds comes up because they were discussing Riker's son uh, when mm -hmm. when Riker's son was uh, being born. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, just the de-aging technology there, it uh, didn't work out too well, I thought. Your thoughts? Yeah, no, that, that de-aging was not the best. It, mm -hmm. it was not, a, let's say, Ant-Man 1 quality where we first really saw that. Yeah this was well under i get it it's tv so they have a limited very limited budget i yeah. was like oh that was that was not the prettiest but i do like the conversation in oh, that yes. scene that they were having between oh, yeah. Riker and picard yes it was really a really good conversation and then them getting interrupted because uh Riker's son had been born just not too long ago and being like your right. son is now projectile vomit on this console and that console right yeah and deanna's all like ripping on Riker and saying bring the bottle with you <laughs> yeah, bring the whiskey bottle yeah bring that whiskey bottle yeah so anyway then we jump back to the present and obviously of course uh you know the titan is being chased uh in the you know in the nebula and all and uh you see jack and of course uh beverly beverly is uh you know uh getting back to to full health in a sense but uh yeah, I mean, because of the damage to the ship and some, uh, of course, some of the uh, the crew members of the Titan were injured. Obviously, you can see them looking at Jack with, uh, you know, with contempt, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, obviously and Crusher's just, you know, telling Jack, you know, don't worry about that because they're going to need our medical expertise here in a couple of minutes. And it's interesting where Beverly just jumps right in, you know, and uh, the other doctor, like mm -hmm. the, the chief medical officer on the Titan was saying, you know, your you know 20 20 year old methods you know uh uh don't worry about it i can take care of stuff here you know with our you know our medically advanced you know uh procedures and everything but you know crusher helps out and all so what did you think of these scenes there uh i think they're i think they're fine you knew they were doing this to set up like yeah that's great no you're trying to help but you don't know as much as we know because technology is advanced change we have new medical procedures so i know more than you haha -ha. yeah yeah without that without the ha ha really it's just like that that was okay yeah but you yeah. knew you knew they were gonna set it up for her. oh oh she actually found a way that could fix that we can't see with the new technology we have yeah and this is that yeah so anyway, let's jump on to uh, this this part. I mean, the the this emotional scene here. I mean, and uh, yeah, just getting down to you know the situation between Crusher and Picard, and you know before Crusher left the Enterprise, and 
you know, where they were on shore leave, but then he was called back early and it was always like that. And, and then it gets, you know, Picard gets to the point where he's like, Hey, you know, you could have at least told me, you know, I might have changed. I might have done things differently. You know, maybe I would have gone off with you, you know? And, uh, and then of course, Crusher starts bringing up Picard's father and, uh, and that's the thing that he was struggling with in season two, of course, you know, with, uh, Picard with his father and all. And uh, Picard was getting angry and was like, don't bring my father into this to try to justify the things that you did with 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 Jack, you know, and everything. Uh, yeah. What did you think of the conversation, man? It was getting pretty serious there. Yeah, it was getting serious, but you could just see like this was them trying to they ripped themselves at a corner. They were trying anything to throw at the wall and stick. This was something I didn't like. Uh, the writing here because she's like well I was going to tell you but then this you got involved in this thing and then five days later you got involved in this thing so yeah, you were busy and danger follows you and you love it so yeah. I didn't want to give our child ch let our child know and yeah. let you know it's like like th this just was like uh... but she was scared too because she was also talking about you know the the son of jean-luc picard would have a target on his back all the time as well so you know uh i think she was scared in a way to uh to to yeah. uh let let picard in uh about you know uh having a son because you know as she was arguing with him she was like you know you never wanted to have a, a family you know you wanted to distance yourself from that and all. Uh, so, yeah, I think in a sense she was a little scared as well. Yeah, yeah no, no, I, I like I, I get that. But it just it seemed to me like this was just they, they, they ripped themselves in. They were trying and she was saying multiple things like that just to get it to stick and be like, aha, see, we could figure our way out. Yeah, that, like th this was just really weak to me. Mm hmm. Okay. Anyway, so uh, yeah, obviously we get the firefight, and uh, obviously uh, Captain Shaw gets uh, critically injured, uh, and so he transfers command of the ship to Riker, <laughs> and then he gets taken to uh, you know sick bay and all. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I just in this whole episode, I mean, how you know the the enemy ship was using that. Uh, you know, the, the portal technology and all the, you know, the, I mean, just, they were toying with the Titan the whole time. You know, they, they knew exactly what was going on. And obviously, you know, they had help. Yeah. And we're going to get to that in a little bit. But uh, what, what did you think of uh, the CGI and all of these scenes here with the, the, the battle in the nebula? The CGI overall, I mm -hmm. think was good. Mm -hmm. There are a few little moments where the CGI wasn't good, the greatest. But I do like this, like, in this battle thing here, you've got differing opinions. You got Riker that is wanting to hide because he wants to he wants to try. He knows right. he knows best right. better of what the Titan class ships can do. Yeah. And from the brief we've seen of this ship, he knows we go on a head to head fight, we're dead. Yeah. Like so you said, he, it's not the Enterprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he yeah. said that to Picard, and I I do love that moment, yeah. uh, those moments. He's he's telling uh, Picard, "Hey, I know what this ship can do. I want to get out of here and save as many people here, everyone here, we can." Right. And Picard is like, "No, I want to fight." It's like, yeah, Ugh. I just I didn't understand that. Yeah, I, I thought you uh, know he would have he would have agreed with Riker, and the first priority is to save as many of the crew as possible save the yeah, ship the, yeah but uh, this this is like besides the whole this is kind of like bad writing this is just it, it seems to be like picard has tried to recapture his youth and because now he knows he's got a, a 20 year old a son on board yeah. he's like no nah, i gotta show my son i'm cool man and we can take them on yeah yeah so yeah. it doesn't look at me like i'm an old old man it's yeah like, uh, well we'll get yeah. to that we're gonna get to more of that later in the in the discussion but uh, i i just want to point out uh, one scene with uh sydney laforge and i really like and and she's i'm i'm telling you right now i mean if it wasn't for sydney laforge they probably would be dead already because of her yeah. you know uh her maneuverability at the helm 
I mean, you know, she's an amazing pilot. But anyway, I love the scene where she goes to talk to Seven, you know, in Seven's quarters. And she talks about, you know, how, you know, it was hard for her to make friends and all. And uh, her being the, the daughter of Jordy LaForge and, and all, uh, she can understand how it is to, you know, to, you know, to be different and all. And uh, I, I really like that scene with her, uh, you know, trying to, to comfort Seven, you know, and, you know, being confined to quarters and all. And uh, and then as she's leaving, she calls her Commander Seven, you know. So I, I really like that moment. I thought that was pretty yeah. cool. That yeah. that that was that was a good moment. Yeah, that was a really good, probably one of the one of the best character moments in this whole episode. I would say. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it's like, uh, and Shaw relieves some of the crew there, uh, including Sydney, because, yeah, they've been up there for 36 straight hours. Just imagine, Burley, you're on the computer for 36 straight hours. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and, no, I... Yeah. And Shaw is like, get some rest if you can, yeah. So, yeah, and, yeah, and which, you know, really does well for Shaw, to, yeah. you know, humanize him and not be like the first two episodes first episode where you're like he is captain dick like yeah, it, yeah. it really shows the highlight he does care about his people and he realizes yeah. well, i've got my people that are working so long like yeah. this we're, we're dead anyways we'll just yeah, be and dead it's, so i and now so it's kind of fun and it's kind of funny as you think back to the the first episode when picard and Riker first come on the ship when they go to eat dinner with them he's like we're we're just going to be doing regular maneuvers something different for you guys you know, you guys are, you know, like used to blowing things up and all. Well, now everything's getting blown up on him. So, <laughs> yeah. So what he's talking about was like completely coming true. But uh, so. All right. So let's go ahead and move on now. Let's get to, you know, Rafi and Worf. And uh, yeah. Now, this is where the the this the episode gets really interesting and this is what i like about the story aspect of it all and where they're going with this now obviously they get this other conspirator and uh rafi thinks that you know rafi of course in the episode meets Worf and all and you know Worf is <laughs> i just love how Worf is like just this calm cool and collective klingon now you know mm -hmm. he's just like you know like rafi's messing with him what is it beheadings on tuesday and all and then it's like when they when Worf apprehends this guy and just like one handedly just slams him on the, on the ground. He's like, you know, beheadings are on Wednesdays. <laughs> <laughs> I just love that man. You know, just how calm, cool and collective he's become, you know, and, and he talks about it in the episode. Like, you know, I, I used to be like you, you know, but I've changed. I just so good, man. You know, but Rafi thinks this, this guy is just another drug addict, but, Obviously, we find out he is not a drug addict, is he, Burley? No, no, he is not a, another drug. Just a, you think you think he's a junkie do, or, or a drug addict? Nope, yeah. he's not. Ed. But I, I, I just want to go back a sec. Worf was just great in this. Worf is probably him and Riker are my favorites on this because I think they do yeah. really good well well with their portrayals of their characters. Like they've yeah. both grown and yeah. like. It must be that prune juice. All that prune <laughs> juice he drank, uh, drank during DS9 and all that. that just, Maybe. You know, me me mellows him out a little and he's gotten older, he's gotten wiser because he's seen from all the stuff from Next Gen and yep. Deep Space Nine and Warp, Warp has gone through that have. Yep. yep. And what I love about this, obviously, they find out he's a changeling. And yeah. then Warp just comes right up to him and says... You know, how long have you been away from the Great Link? Uh, I I love that because Worf yeah. starts to get figure it out, yeah. and because he dealt he dealt with Odo in Deep Space yes. Nine as yes. the other Chage Legs during the during the uh, Dominion War and all that. So he, yeah, he he has some experience and knowledge. So yeah, and uh, of course Odo was referenced in this episode, obviously. You know because. Uh, Odo was the, you know, the one giving intel to, to Worf about these, uh, you know, like terrorist factions of the of the Dominion, of, of the changelings that did not want, you know, the, the, the peace treaty with the Federation. And yeah. so, yeah, so we have changelings out there that are, uh, you know, you know, terrorists. 
and uh, up to something really big. So basically, that that uh, you know that uh, portal technology is just it's not the main thing that they're after it's something else and we're going to find out in in later episodes but uh yeah it's just i love how he just wharf grabs his face you know as he can't hold himself anymore and then he goes into you know liquid form again and then they of course blast him and all get the phaser out and yeah yeah you know that phaser wasn't set to stun <laughs> yep but then of course we find out that there is another changeling Another conspirator that is uh, obviously a saboteur on the Titan. And it's interesting, like, he's been in a lot of scenes in the first few episodes. You know, he was in, like, uh, when Riker and uh, Picard first came on the Titan, he was in the line of uh, officers there. Uh, in the last episode, he was the transporter, you know, operator and all. Uh, when uh, we find out that Jack is, uh, you know, Picard's son and all. I mean, so he's been everywhere. And uh, yeah, we find out he's the conspirator and uh, the saboteur uh, because there's like a gas leak and all. And that's how the uh, the Shriek is able to find the Titan, you know, which answered Shaw's question of, uh, you know, how is she able to continue to keep finding us? Well, yeah. that's how. And uh, yeah, and Jack, of course, uh, he confronts Jack in there as Jack and uh, Seven are obviously you know, finding out what's going on. And then uh, he just, yeah, knocks out Jack and Jack almost dies from the, the gas inhalation. Uh, but anyway, what did you think of uh, having the saboteur on the Titan? Yeah. I don't know if we needed this kind of plot point in, in all honesty, because you've already got the ship that is way outclasses them. Mm -hmm. You could have, you could have written a better reason for them to, found them because this is a little i think this was just a little too much put again here but overall i think it was handled fine yeah well the thing is we don't know if they're saboteurs on every single starfleet vessel now i mean yeah. there could be there could be changelings everywhere within the federation now and that's the, oh. that's the cool thing I, I as i'm watching this i'm thinking man okay we have a saboteur you know, we have the the conspirator that Worf and Rafi caught. I mean, yeah. they're probably everywhere. You know, well, we yeah, know yeah. Now, now, how hot? Like, it's like the scroll invasion of Marvel. How? Yeah. Where, how how many do we? And what levels of Starfleet? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And so now, of course, Worf and Rafi have to get to the Daystrom Institute because they have to find out what it is that they're actually after. And from what they're speculating, it's something much, much bigger than the portal weapon. So, uh, yeah. So then, of course, we get back to the Titan. And obviously, as we were mentioning earlier, of course, you know, Picard and Riker getting into the big, you know, argument about Picard's saying to attack, attack. And and Riker's, you know, still trying to figure out a way to, to hide and to, to, to be able to outrun them and get away and get out of the nebula nebula and uh, get to the nearest star base but then of course Riker gives in to Picard and they attack and then they just throw all these photon torpedoes out there but then of course they just use the portal weapon and the portal weapon just turns all the weapons that they fired back onto them and uh, <sighs> just completely damages the Titan and now it's just floating dead in the nebula and it's floating down into the gravity well of the nebula so your thoughts on that yeah th this was just a really really bad writing moment uh for picard himself just being like no no, no. we th we have our chance we'll attack now you seen them use the portal technology when you were trying to escape and catching you mm -hmm. what made you think that that wasn't going to happen with the photon torpedoes and all your attacks yeah like that was just like yeah. How did you not see that coming? Like, yeah, you literally should have like it should have went to the like gone to the enemy ship there and mm -hmm. had her be like, are you really that dumb, John Luke? Yeah, that was yeah, that was, you know, kind of unbecoming of Picard in, in a yeah. way. Uh, you know, I just I didn't understand his reasoning there. You know, I would have agreed with Riker. It's like, try to let's try to find a way to get the hell out of here. You know, even if we have to jump into warp right before we get out of the nebula, if possible, I mean, let's do that. You know, well, this, so, like yeah. Riker's being 
calm, collected, and being smart here. Picard's acting on emotion so much right. here. It's like, right. Right. no, like, where is old Picard from Next Gen? Because he would not be doing any of what Picard's saying. He'd be agreeing with Riker. And they'd it be seemed, so it seemed like he was just acting as like, like a, a, a like an, an old person on geriatrics over a hundred years old. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just yeah. how it no. felt, you know, it's like, and then Riker's like, get off the bridge, you know, you, you're, you've just killed us all. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And he's like, yeah, I need you off the bridge. It's like, yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. <sighs> like th this this is where i'm like oh no i'm not looking forward to this well the next Go episode is called no win scenario so uh, obviously we got the kobayashi maru you know reference mm -hmm. there so and jonathan frakes is is going to be directing that episode as well as uh as uh he directed episode three so uh well yeah. uh, hof hopefully it's Riker doing it not picard because it's like uh, yeah. Picard yeah. can't be trusted, and if anyone is your scene right now, who mm -hmm. who would you trust right now to be leading you? Because their captain is out in sick bay right now. I would I would say seven. <laughs> if it were me, I would want seven commanding. Well, uh, I don't se know. Se yeah. se seven would be a good choice, but I'd still yeah. put my money on Riker. Oh yeah, yeah. Riker no, if it, I, that's what I mean. I mean, yeah, obviously Riker. But if it wasn't Riker, it would. If mm -hmm. I had to pick anybody else, it'd be seven. So yeah, you know, Commander Hansen. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, episode four is called No End Scenario. Episode five is called Imposter. Episode six is called Bounty. And then seven, eight, nine, and ten, we do not have the uh, the names of the episodes yet. So uh, yeah, but uh, yeah, we shall see. So uh, anyway, that has been our recap and discussion of Picard Season 3, Episode 3. So uh, we hope you enjoyed the episode, and uh, we hope to catch you again uh, next week when we do uh, Season 3, Episode 4 of Picard here on uh, Warp Factor 10, our show about all things Star Trek here on the Arena Productions. So anyway, I've been your host, Expat, along with uh, my co-host, Burley. Take care, everyone, and uh, we hope to catch you next week. So live long and prosper. Peace out.